Hello, welcome to the Governance Blueprint series. My name is John Landgrave and I'm a Power Platform Architect at Microsoft. In the last episode of this series, we looked at the minimal settings required to secure your tenant. In this episode, we'll explore the options for managing Dataverse for Teams. As I mentioned in Episode 1, your Office 365 subscription includes an allocation of Dataverse for Teams environments. Since there are a limited number of these environments available, you'll want to have a process in place that allows you to determine who creates and consumes them. In this episode, we'll explore your options for managing Dataverse for Teams environment provisioning. Unlike non-default environments, which you will explicitly create as part of your environment strategy, Dataverse for Teams environments are implicitly created when a user performs an action that requires Dataverse for Teams to be included in the team. So for example, if a user creates an application from your application catalog and places that into a team, and that application requires the use of Dataverse for Teams, then that environment will be created dynamically. In addition, if a maker in a Teams environment opens up Power Apps and creates an application as part of a team, then a Dataverse for Teams environment will also be created as part of that application creation process. Once a Dataverse for Teams environment is created, it will be shared by all the members and owners of that team who can freely make and distribute applications in that team that are part of that Dataverse for Teams environment. They can also invite guests who can consume any Dataverse for Teams application that they create. There are three different ways that you can manage Dataverse for Teams environment creation. By managing Power Platform apps in the Team Center, by controlling which applications get installed in the Enterprise Catalog, and by using an approval workflow process that manages your Dataverse for Teams environments. Let's look at each of those in more detail. In the Microsoft Teams Admin Center, a Teams administrator can control which applications are accessible to users in their organization. The shared Power Apps and shared Virtual Agent Apps in your organization's App Store represent all the apps created for that particular platform. If you block one or both of these apps at the org level or for specific users, then those users can't see any apps from those platforms in built by your colleagues and can't install them in Teams. Keep in mind that you can control access to all apps created in Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents, but you can't allow or block individual apps. Makers decide who can access the apps they create by inviting someone to the team where they can see the applications and consume them. Keep in mind that if you block any Power Platform application inside of Teams, then that application will not be accessible anywhere in Teams, even from applications that are pinned to the tabs across the top of a team. There may be cases where you want some users to be able to use Dataverse for Teams, but not all users. You can accomplish this by creating a custom permission policy. In that permission policy, you would allow certain Power Platform applications, for example, shared Power Apps, to be used by members of a group, but disallow all other users. This is fairly common when organizations begin testing Dataverse for Teams and want to be able to do prototypes or proofs of concept, but don't intend to roll it out to the entire organization until that process has been completed. Teams admins also have the ability to add applications to the list of enterprise approved applications. For example, an admin could build a Power App for Teams, package it up, and put it in the enterprise approved applications in the App Store, and this will let someone else use or create this app in their team, which in turn will instantiate a Dataverse for Teams environment. But keep in mind that having apps in the App Store and allowing users to download and install them, users would still need permission to execute a shared Power App before they could consume these applications. In order to help our enterprise customers manage the creation of Dataverse for Teams environments, we've added some functionality to the COE Starter Kit. In the COE Starter Kit, we provide a flow that you can turn on, which will run if someone creates an environment in Dataverse for Teams, either intentionally or accidentally. The workflow will notify the user with either an action card in the team if they installed a template, or an email if they created a blank application and therefore created a new environment dynamically. The notification provides an area for them to provide a business justification for the new environment. If an administrator doesn't approve the business justification, then the environment will be deleted within seven days. 
This workflow is installed as part of the COE starter kit and must be configured and activated before it will work. We'll cover the COE starter kit in more detail in a future episode in this series. Now that we've covered the configuration of the default environment, the tenant, and Dataverse for Teams, you should have a good understanding of the minimal settings required to secure the Power Platform. But governing the platform extends beyond securing it. Developing an environment strategy will allow you to provide a secure, managed Power Platform service to your enterprise users. In the next module, we'll look at the areas you should consider when creating an enterprise management strategy that covers governance, security, administration, and management of the Power Platform in your organization. Thank you.